everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the UFC card for Saturday, June 11th. Um, it's a pretty decent-sized D-Gen Saturday with the Truck Series race, plus the Belmont Stakes, plus everything else that's going on, plus the UFC. Um, and let's get after it. I think we had a really good week last week. Um, again, it just depended on how many lineups you played, but I did mention that it was a good um, it was it was a good card to identify some key fights, and we did a really nice job doing that. Uh, that Gravely fight um, really really delivered, um, and that was really an important key to doing well um, last week. So hopefully we can continue that this week with a pretty full uh, pretty full fight card here. So let's just again let's just go through fight by fight and take a look at the you know at the numbers here. First fight, we have Pasquale against Edwards, and, you know, it's got a pretty fishy inside the distance prop. Um, it's plus 137 to, to go to decision, actually. So it's favored to go to a decision. And in the absence of there being any real price issue or huge grappling upside, I think this fight's probably a pass. So let's just take a look just to make sure. So you have Pasquale at a plus... 140 versus 160, which is right about what these guy, girls are priced at. So there's no price equity. There's really no grappling at equity and there's no inside the distance equity. So it's pretty much an overall pass. Uh, the second fight on the card uh, from a, before I even look at the numbers, I have a feeling it's going to be talked about as a real exciting fight only because Looks like I haven't been watching UFC as much as you know a lot of people, but I definitely remember both of these girls uh, getting involved in some pretty short and exciting fights. Uh, Gomez Suarez getting finished by, I think it was Lupita Godinez really quickly. Um, and uh, Leanne Na got in a freaking war with uh, Carnalosi, where the her trainers literally had to pick her up off the ground after the first round and bring her back to her corner. That's how tired she was. So a huge action fight. So I'm just presuming that this fight's going to be popular with a strong inside the distance prop, but let's just take a look and see about that. Um, uh, yep. <laughs> you very rarely see this. This fight doesn't go to decision line in a women's fight of minus 260. Um, and there's, again, as I said, there's a reason for that. You know, just the eye test. If you watch the, these girls' last couple of fights, they really just kind of do get after it. And for a, you know, for women's fights, that's just pretty rare. Um, I'm kind of be inclined to probably fade this uh, if it goes to, you know, uh, if either of these girls become too popular. We're going to take a look at the ownership uh, a little bit later uh, in the week. Um, as a matter of fact, if we were going to, um, if I were going to recommend kind of an outright bet in the betting market, I would actually bet this to go to decision plus the whatever it is, plus the plus 200. It's just because I just feel as though, just because the eye test these last two fights are just kind of latched in everybody's mind. It's still women's MMA and women's MMA simply just doesn't finish. Um, it just doesn't finish all too often. And I just can't put this at a minus 250. It's just not gonna happen. Now, again, I'm now probably just, you know, inserting my own opinion over the numbers here, which is not usually what I do, but let's just say that in MMA, when I've done this, it's, had a pretty good ROI with this type of thing. So I would probably, I would probably err on the side of fading this fight in DFS for being too popular and probably um, for the same reason, I guess, err on the side of betting the over um, to betting that this does go to a decision. And let's just take a look at, can we, can we get to some of this, these fighters, other fights, except for her, their last ones? I mean, all I'm seeing is this last fight by Leon Na. Um, where she did get gassed out or whatever it is, but I just can't imagine that that's going to be, that you could fight 24 fights and, play, and fight like that every single time. And, uh, Gomez, and Gomez Suarez, 
she's got two straight losses in the first round. But, you know, that doesn't mean that she's just going to fight one round fights. You know, um, I don't know. I'm just kind of of the belief that this this fight could fail. Um, and I would bet that it goes to a decision. And uh, yeah, you know, so based totally on the numbers, it's, it's probably a fight that you want to get to. Um, and I bet you that Leon, uh, in the, at the end of the day, I would say that she is one of the more popular fighters on the whole slate. That's going to be my opinion. Um, there's just, it's just too hard to not play it with those inside the distance props. But I just think that, that the inside the distance prop is just wrong. <laughs> it's, just, it's based on literally two fights and I don't think that's good enough. So anyway, that's, that's my very strange opinion. Strange because I very rarely come up with them that way. Um, then you have this fight, this Dana Baccarel against, uh, against Kang. And this is strange because I, I don't think I could have been more wrong than in, than this last fight. So Dana Baccarel, I was a hundred percent sure that he was going to have a huge striking advantage and just beat the crap out of Gutierrez. Uh, but it just went exactly the opposite way. I mean, he actually got a takedown. And Gutierrez, who's supposed to be just this leg kick guy, you know, that doesn't do much, just took his head off pretty much. So uh, very, very bizarre for me. But I, I, I would go back to my original assessment of this guy being just kind of a killer. So um, I feel as though it's a really good matchup between a killer type striker and kind of a, a wrestler type. Um, Kang. Two fights ago, had three takedowns. Two fight before that, he had three takedowns. I mean, against Yaya, that's kind of tough. Yaya is a you know a big big time uh, veteran, so it's hard. Um, so I think that either of these fighters, their win condition is extremely strong. Um, but let's take a look at the numbers here. I, I have a feeling that this one's going to not be priced as strongly as these others. Um, let's see. Uh, Inside the distance, doesn't even have one. It's really weird. Hold on. Um, Baccarat against Young. It just has Baccarat inside the distance is plus 175. And Kang inside the distance is, um, I can't even find it. Um, nonetheless, we're not, we're not going to be betting Kyung, uh, Kang to finish inside the distance. Kang we're betting because of his upside with grappling. Back around, we are betting to finish inside the distance because he has a lot of power. And their prices are really, really strong at 83 and 7,900. And I think this is probably a real key fight. Um, I think that, the, again, the Guilmas Suarez fight will garner just a lot more ownership than this one because of that inside the distance prop. But I think that this fight is just as likely, if not more so, to deliver a big score than that other one. Okay, Jake Matthews against Andre Fialo. Um, let's take a look at this one. This one we have fight does not go to decision is minus 190. So that is pretty strong, not elite, but I would say pretty strong. And we also have another um, kind of contrast in styles here. I mean, you have Fialo, who is kind of a knockout artist. You know, he likes to knock him out in the first round if he can do it. And Jake Matthews is a little more well-rounded. He would probably be the one to have, you know, some degree of grappling upside. He does have four takedowns a couple of fights ago. Um, and you look through his record here. I mean, like he's, he just every once in a while he put together this four fight, you know, this, this multiple takedown performance. And against Fiala, this is probably what he's going to want to do. So you have kind of a perfect situation um, where either of these fighters' win conditions kind of get the job done. Um, with respect to pricing, Fiala eighty five hundred, and what's his name. Uh, Matthew 7,700. I think this one, again, I think this is a really, really good fight to play. Um, instinctively, by the way, I still feel the Baccarel fight is better. Um, I just, again, I hate to put my eye test over, over the, over the actual numbers, but I just, I've seen Baccarel and the guy, the guys, guys, guy hits hard, you know, and I think that his win condition is really KO. You know, I think he's, I don't think he's, he's winning a decision. 
Um, and the other guy in that fight, if he gets the fight to the mat, I think he scores a lot of points. So uh, I love, I like that fight more, but I like Fialo Matthews as well. All right, Garcia Machete. I guess that's the best way you can. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. Um, this one seems to be uh, another one with a minus 220. Uh, fight doesn't go to decision. And from, from what I can gather, you know, Machete is, is a guy from the Chinese or the uh, Korean promotion um, that, you know, he's fought some pretty bad guys, but then he won a, a series being the the biggest underdog in that whole card. So you got, he's got to have something, but the problem is from what I hear, he's just kind of a technical boxer, which is not really the type that you want to play in DFS. Um, so if anything, I feel as though that, that most of the inside the distance prop is on the Garcia side. So this is one of those where if I play the fight at all, it would be on the Garcia side and not on the machete, the machete side. So I do like this fight. Um, the numbers look pretty good. Take a look at the prices here. I mean, you have Garcia 8,400 looks completely reasonable to say the least, you know, he's, he's a, um, I mean, not only is he a, uh, a 180 favorite, you know, but he also is, has all that inside the distance uh, prop going for him and compare that to say, I don't know, look at Jocelyn Edwards, for example, Jocelyn Edwards, 8,700 and Garcia is 8,400. And Edwards is minus 160 and, and Garcia is minus 180. I mean, you see that you see why Garcia just, I mean, not to compare apples to app, oranges, but this is why, you know, the Garcia place is so much a better play than Jocelyn Edwards. Um, that's the way you compare these things. So in this fight, again, I don't want to play the machete side, but I think Garcia is very live. All right. Brandon Allen versus Jacob Malkoon. Um, you know, minus 200 to not go to decision and Brandon Allen is a minus 300 favorite. I mean, this is a pretty solid, just solid as hell play, you know? And you know, the funny thing is, is the more, the more I go through these fights, the more I'm thinking that maybe that, that women's fight from earlier, the Gomez Suarez fight, maybe it's going to be not going to be quite as popular as I think, you know, may, may, maybe that is a fight that is not going to get owned that you could play pretty handily, but I don't, you may have to see, we just have to see ownership. Um, and, and we'll, we'll follow up on that throughout the course of the week. I still do like the, the, the over in that fight, by the way, but um, this Brandon Allen fight, and this is, this is everything you want. This is a big favorite. This is a big, it's a big favorite. Also go to a decision, excuse me, to finish. And not to mention Brandon Allen also has some grappling upside also. So, this is really strong. What is he, 9,200? I mean, if he's 9,200 or less, it's very, very fair. And, yeah, it's, I mean, it's 9K. I mean, I, I think that a three-to-one favorite with that type of upside, I think should even be higher. So I think 9K is very reasonable. I and mean, he's probably, if not the best play on the slate, I mean, he's got to be pretty close to it, right? Well, we'll get back to that, I guess. Wow, as you go through this card, I mean, there's these – there's so many of these fights are, are so intriguing. I, I really wasn't anticipating this, but now you have de this, this Della Madalena versus Amiv, 8,200 versus 8K. And this is, boy, oh boy, this is a extremely strong, you know, you have, well, look at the, first of all, the pricing is good, but it's weird. The fight doesn't go to decision prop is, is much weaker than I thought it was going to be. Like, I guess it's because Amiv is not really a finisher, you know? Um, you know, I mean, Amiv is just more of a wrestler that's going to wear on you and blanket you, where, where Madalena is more the, uh, the knockout guy. And I think if we look at, the, at how this breaks down, yeah, so you have Magdalena winning by TKO as plus 275 versus Amiv winning at by TKO's plus 1100 or by submission plus 800. So basically all of the inside the distance prop is on the Magdalena side. So that's, what's kind of tricky is that I do think that he does have a really good inside the distance prop, 
even though the fight itself does not, because Amib's past to victory just is not by, by finish. However, Amib's path to victory is by grappling and by wrestling. So uh, I think he does have a win condition. The only problem is, is that he's not the type of guy who is going to get, multi, get takedown after takedown and then pound on you because you want to get those strikes to go along with the, the takedowns to rack up those points. Um, so this fight, I mean, just but let's look at, listen, just by the nature of the pricing, 8,200, 8K, and the fact that each of these guys has a good win condition, it's kind of a tough fight to ignore. And, and, and once again, it's given me more credence. Uh, it's given me more uh, pause to my, <laughs> to my assessment that other women's fight was going to be chalk because maybe it won't be. There's a lot of these well-priced fights that are really, really good. Um, and not, you know, including this one. Uh, all right. Um, Seung Woo Choi versus Josh Kulabau. Okay. Finally, we have a, a fight without a great inside the distance prop. This is about a pick em. And Choi is only a 200 favorite and he's a just a pure striker. So all of those things kind of combine to make him a fade for me. You know, I, I, I would, you got to fade somebody. I mean, I would play Brandon Allen, you know, every which way before I would play Sun Wong, Sun Yu Choi. The inside of distance prop is not as good. The grappling upside is not as good. Even the win odds are not as good. I think he's actually very poorly priced here um, relative to some of these others. So uh, I don't, I do not like Choi at all, um, nor do I like Kula Bao. Um, moving up to cop against Bontarin. Um, fight doesn't go to decision, not bad, minus 190. And you have cap, cape, or whatever, he's minus 230. He, he's definitely not going to be as good of a, of a play as Brandon Allen, but if you look at the pricing, yeah, and the pricing is really bad you know what i mean like I, i'm going back to this brandon allen play and brandon allen is just so much a better play than all these other 9k is just based on the numbers right i mean it's not like manel cap is all this grappling upside to go along with this inside the distance prop i mean this is a, this is uh i think this is a this is kind of a mismatch in terms of pricing let me just double check this again I mean, brandon allen's minus 300 versus cop is minus 200 Brandon Allen's inside the distance prop is the same minus 200, right, as Cop. Actually, it's even better, plus the fact that he's got grappling upside. So there's just no reason why, why Cop should be a bigger favorite. At, uh, I mean, to be uh, higher priced. Um, bon Turin is, to, is actually sort of interesting in that he does have grappling upside. He he He... In, in a pretty well-watched fight against Kai Kara France, he was basically on his neck and backpacking him the whole first round, almost finishing him. And then somehow he just kind of like slipped off him and then he got the crap beat out of him in the last 15 seconds of the round. So, and he, and he, and he lost the fight in the first round. Um, I, I just have this weird feeling that if he tries to do that to cop, it's going to end up the same, you know, cop will just kind of like, just kind of eventually get him off his neck, like a, like a mosquito and then just pummel him. Um, so I'm not really into the Bonter inside either. So I don't know. I think this is kind of a fade. All right. Zhang Wei Li versus Joanna. Uh can't uh I don't pronounce pronounce her name. But minus 165 and fight doesn't go to decision of I mean it's minus 225 to finish. I mean, it's supposed to go to decision. I can't imagine why anybody would play this fight. Um I mean, if anything, I mean, Joanna, she, she has a, maybe has a little more volume, but she's on a layoff. You, you, I don't really want to play her. Yeah. I think this is a, uh, I mean, why, again, like, why would you play this? Except look, if it's really, really low owned, sure. But the Shang Wei Lee, I mean, she's been in main events and everybody plays her. So I don't think she's going to go completely unowned. And there's, there's just no way. I mean, how do you play her over, say, 
like I said, even even Sylvania Gomez Suarez, even though I thought she was going to be too chalky, I mean, hell, she's got a I mean, even even if their inside distance prop is not worth minus two hundred, even if it's a pick them, it's a hell of a lot better than this the Zhang Wei fight. So I think the Zhang Wei fight is really a full fade on both sides. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Valentina Shevchenko, she is her she is a minus six hundred, but. Fight doesn't go to decision is only a pickup. Um, let's drill down just a little bit into this and let's see if we can't invent another way for her to get there without the finish. Um, well, <laughs> fortunately, she's got big takedown upside also. She had three takedowns in her last fight. The one before that, she had seven takedowns in two rounds. She had five takedowns against Maya. I mean, she puts up just enormous scores. Um, so it's tough to fade this uh, this this fighter. I mean, she's really she's the best, and she also puts up huge scores. Or what, what else? Do, what else do you want from her? Um, I mean, you have to go all the way back to August of two thousand nineteen. Actually, that's not true. You go back to February of two thousand twenty. For a score that doesn't that doesn't smash, you know what I mean. Um, so if you can get her in, yeah. I mean, I, I literally have nothing bad to say about this play. I mean, ninety six hundred is too too cheap. You know, she's gonna win, right? Um, she's a six to one favorite, and it's not as if she's a big decisionator. Um, the only thing I would say is this. Well, the last three fights that she's had have been five round fights. Well, let me ask you, is this a five round fight? That is a good question, isn't it? Um, I guess I should know that. Let's take a look. Yeah, it is a five round fight. So she's gonna have the time to garner up all those points. And it's uh, probably a good play. I mean, if you can, if you can get her in, I mean, the, the problem is I haven't really identified a hell of a lot as far as the, the real cheapos to play, you know, uh, I really didn't identify anybody or under 7,600, right. That you could play. I mean, you have um, Liang Nia, who I didn't think I wanted to play. You have Jake Matthews. I guess that's something. You have Kang, but that's only 7,900. That's really it. And then, oh, we have still the main event to talk about as well. Um, all right. So, and this is why, this is another reason why the yeah, Anna is going to be popular. If you were going to be looking for good underdogs and, and, and she's not only reasonable at 7,600, but she's also has a lot of big, pace and finish upside also at least according to the to the given numbers and then finally in the main event you have uh glover Teixeira against yuri prashako and, and listen i i i bet against uh what i bet against i had dfs exposure to the jury's last fight against dominic reyes um i i think i needed both of them whatever but i needed the other guy more and I got to tell you, the first round was really exciting. You know, first I thought that Jerry was going to get taken out. Then I thought that 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 race was going to be taken out. I really didn't know what was going on. And then the second round, like Jerry just hit him with this incredible freaking spinning back fist. I think it just murdered him, so to speak. Um, so he's very unorthodox. He's a stone psycho. And is against the 42-year-old dude who just came off the incredible, the incredible upset. I mean, how do you do this? You're 42 years old off a year layoff, and you come back as a huge underdog at 7,200, and you basically win easy by second round sub, putting up a score which breaks the slate pretty much. And that's the thing about being about being him being him. I mean, he's got five rounds, he's got a lot of takedown upside. And he's 7,200. Literally every time he wins, he breaks the slate, you know? And, and the fact that 
he's 7,300. And his win odds are a very reasonable plus 170. And he's got the five rounds. I mean, this is this is this is a really, really live underdog. I mean, to say the least. You know, so what are we gonna have here? We're gonna have Liang Na, we're gonna have Glover Teixeira. And if you do that, I mean, then 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 the world's your oyster. Then you could play Brandon Allen if you want. And you could even play another, you know, you I bet you could even play Shevchenko, right? Because you could remember the, all those $8,200 fights that we talked about. We could grab some of that. So these are the two underdogs. If you get these home, right, it makes your life really easy. Um, but if you do this, now it's not so easy. Now you probably can't play both Brandon Allen and Shevchenko. You probably only play one of them. And then just kind of live the rest of your life in this 8K range, which is fine. So I think you are going to have to play at least one of Allen, uh, not Allen, uh, Liang Na, Glover Teixeira, and who was the other guy that I re- that I, I brought up at seventy six hundred? Um, well, if you consider Matthews a a real underdog at seventy seven hundred. I think you're going to have to pick one of these three. I mean, probably two of these three at least. If you take three of them, then, then you could really have fun, right? If you take three of them, then you can really have fun. You could play Allen and you could play Shushenko, and then you could play, listen, I don't have to tell you who you have to keep play, but you could play a lot of these guys or girls. Um, that's if you put all three of those underdogs. If you play only two of them, you know, then then you got to live in the mid-range more. And if you don't want to play, if you want to play one of them, like you want to fade the Leon nothing, then you really got to live in this 8K range. And then you don't get to play. But you still, but you know what? You still can play the like two studs. I mean, you can play Brandon Allen and Shevchenko and just one dog and then live the rest of your life in the 8K range with some really good plays. So... I mean, I like it. You know, I like it. I think I think it's a very logical slate to make lineups. Um, and this is without even looking at, at getting poisoned by the rest of the industry, which I'm probably going to end up doing tomorrow. Um, and I'll we'll get back to you Friday with kind of a uh, a re, not redo, but a, a more updated video. But but let's just say this: if the if 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 everything locked in, in a half an hour, I will tell you what I would do. Edwards Pascal would be faded. Gomez Nya, I mean, I, I'll probably end up playing one of these girls. Baccarat, Kang, probably end up playing them in mid range. Fialo, Matthews, maybe play one of these guys. I'll probably fade Machete. Garcia could be one of those 8Ks I play. I'll fade Choi Kulabau. Um, Brandon Allen looks like, like a lock. I mean, like he does. Um, this is another fight. This 8K range is where I'll end up living, so I'll play one of these, maybe. Um, Kat Bontaran is probably going to end up being a full fade. Zhang Wei Li, is, her fight's going to be probably a full fade. Shevchenko, there'll be lineups where I can get to her. Some I can't. And and Prashaka uh, Teixeira, I'm probably going to end up playing either Teixeira or Prashaka or Zero. You know, I'm definitely going to have a decent amount of this fight. Um, and it's the pretty simple approach. One of the truth. Well, let's just see how fancy I can make this over the next couple of days and talk myself off of this, but this is where I am right now.